Well, Limahuli is a really special place for several reasons. Uh, one of the reasons being that Limahuli is in the Ahupua of Haena, and Haena was actually one of the last functioning Ahupua in all of Hawaii, all the way to the late 1960s. And we own and manage this entire valley, it's about a thousand acres. And we have a major responsibility to our community being uh, uh, landowners in this community. And, and what we try and do is we manage our, our resources and our projects based on the old Ahupua system. And we try and be an example of how a return to those philosophies and management practices can be an answer to uh, our sustainability issues today. Another reason why Limahuli is so special is because all, of all of the biological treasures we have in the valley. There's close to 50 species of plants and birds that exist in this valley that are on the verge of extinction. Not all of them have gone through the red tape and been actually officially declared federally endangered species, um, but nonetheless their populations are declining to the point of extinction. So a lot of the work that we do in the forest, uh, in, the, in the back thousand acres that we have in our nature preserve, is to do ecological restoration and working with these extremely rare species, trying to uh, recreate and rebuild the habitat that they can thrive in. So another reason why this place is so special is because we still have an intact, the intact remains of the archaeology of, of the community that once lived here. The agricultural terraces, the housing structures, the religious sites in, in, in the valley. And you know, these have been relatively untouched. In most of the other valleys around the state, bulldozers have come in and development's taken place. But this is really one of the last places where you can come and really see how the community was laid out based on the archaeology. And, and one, one of the first things that you see when you come here is the tarot terraces. And those aren't anything that we've done. Those are more than 700 years old, something our ancestors did hundreds of years ago. And that's just the tip of the iceberg of the agricultural complex that once it thrived in this valley. There seems to be a growing trend in the visitor industry in that people are actually, there's a desire to give back to the places, especially the re repeat visitors that we have. They, they come to Kauai and say, this place is so beautiful and we've, we've taken so much enjoyment from this place, we want to give back. And we have some people actually calling us up and saying, we're here for a week, we want to spend some time helping you guys out. Well, there's, there's various angles that we involve the community in our work. One of the things that we've been really trying to do over the past few years is, is to reawaken the traditions of forest resource management in our community. And one of the reasons why our forest is in such a dire state now is because it's, it's lost a connection to the community and the community is no longer taking care of resources in the forest again. So one of the things that we're trying to do is reestablish that connection. One of the ways we're doing that is we have various uh, forest restoration projects where we replant a lot of the species that are, were once found in this valley. Some of the species we're working with are on the verge of extinction. We're trying to reconnect the, the people with those plants and reawaken the traditions associated with those plants. So there's a desire, and you know, there, there always is a desire to practice these things, but if you don't have the plants, how is your family supposed to carry on the tradition? So what we're trying to do is provide the plants and provide a place where traditions can be passed on and open it up to the community. Yeah, I think the Hawaiian language, the resurgence of the Hawaiian language is, to, is an indicator of the resurgence of the culture. As you know, over the past 200 years, in a lot of ways, uh, we experienced a great collapse on, in, in many areas of the culture. And a lot of things are starting to come back now, including the language. And really, at the, at the foundation of everything about the Hawaiian culture, the language, the traditions, are the, are the plants that exist in Hawaii, both the plants that are native to the island and the plants that our ancestors brought in the canoes. And one thing that we really try and educate people about as they come through Limahuli is that the culture is inextricably linked to the, the plants that are on the land. If the plants in the forest were to all go extinct, that's a huge part of our traditions and our culture that can no longer be practiced. So one of the reasons why, uh, how we engage the community in saving the species in the forest, all these rare trees that are going extinct is you know, helping, helping the people to recognize that once these trees go extinct, every tradition that was ever practiced with that tree can no longer be practiced. And along with that comes the, the resurgence of the language because the language is, you know, that's what holds everything together. The, the relationship between the land and the plants and the people and the ocean. It all makes sense. And you know, the way our ancestors managed the land and viewed the land is a holistic piece from the mountains all the way out to the sea, it makes sense and people can, can understand that. 
and you know island ecosystems are relatively small so when you talk about these things it's on a scale that people can comprehend and understand and they can take it back to wherever they live on a continent and apply the same ideas and philosophies just on a larger scale. I feel I'm extremely optimistic about the future of our work here at Limahuli and in the larger Ahupa of Haena and the reason for that is really the youth of this community. You don't there, the, you can't say anything bad about the, the youth of this community. The, the kids who are in their um, early 20s who are really intelligent, have a good head on their shoulders, have good direction. They love their traditions, they love the land, and they want to be here and they want to perpetuate traditions and care for the land. And if, if a community has that, really we can't fail. So it's a long, arduous process, but we're, we're on the right path and we'll get there. So for people who are interested in giving back, we happen to be part of a larger organization called the National Tropical Botanical Garden, which is a nonprofit that manages three gardens and our nature preserve here in Kauai. So we have volunteer opportunities on the North Shore and on the South Shore. So if you're interested in visiting Kauai and giving back while you're here, you can uh, look at our website.